How's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode 66 of Cub Fans Minecraft Let's Play. And guys, I've been pretty busy in the world, so let's go ahead and get started with a small compilation of what I've been building. So, I uh, hope you guys liked that little compilation of me building the mob trap. You guys might have been able to tell what it was from uh, from the small clips I showed. And I don't know where this zombie is. He's got to be around here somewhere, though. But we'll get him later. Uh, right now, we are going to go ahead and take a minecart ride over to the new mob trap. And see what all sorts of things that the mob trap can do. And see the design. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the rates it gets, and all will be good. So first things first, let's see what we got for the, nether, the next line here. Uh, so I went with the lime green wool here, sort of to signify a creeper, I guess. If you sort of glance at it like out of the corner, it's, you sometimes think it's a creeper. Not really that close to it, uh, color scheme wise, but I think it'll do. So let's go ahead and get on this and go to the mob spawner. So we'll come out here, and I built this as a sky trap. So what I mean by that is it's up, way, way, way up in the sky. It's at about level 215, I think is where the spawning floors are. And it's taken a while to render. There we go. There we go. Now it's coming into view. Okay, cool. All right, so we're here. And uh, yeah, that's that's the rail system up, right there. Comes all the way up t uh, from our rail station down there. And yeah, so this is the mob system here. So let's see if there's any mobs in there. There shouldn't be. Nope, no mobs. And we're at Y211 here. The spawning floor is at I think 215. So it's a few floors above us, or a few uh, blocks above us. But let's go ahead and get into what this thing actually does. So first of all. The spawning pads themselves are 35 by 9. They're just one giant pad. And we can break in here and I'll show you what I mean. So there we are. 35 by 9 giant area. And I gotta be careful not to be swept into this uh, this thing here. Because there's a lava blade just down here at the end. So what happens is... Uh, Mobs will spawn on this when the water is not running. Get pushed into this central stream here. You'll see I've used fence gates 
and then some half slabs to uh, continue the water stream at the same level. That way we didn't have to drop a bunch of levels to uh, to get there. So then we'll cover this back up. Cover this back up so the mobs come down here underneath of us until they reach this point here. And right here, I think it's right here, yep, there's a lava blade. So the mobs get pushed in here, they burn. And then directly underneath that lava blade is a water stream which uh, turns the corner here, comes all the way down there to a single point where we collect our drops. So some of you might be wondering why I decided to uh, go with a mob drop uh, mob system instead of a XP farm. And the reason is with 1.3 coming out, I didn't really feel it was necessary to, uh, to get an XP farm going for the mobs. Uh, I still might, might change the the killing mechanism here might do like a 20, 22 or 23 block uh, drop to uh, get the mobs down and then do an XP farm if it becomes an issue but with the blaze spawner and then uh, perhaps an enderman farm a little bit later on as well as getting uh, XP from mining and smelting soon I don't think XP is going to be that much of an issue for me uh, let's see then uh, you'll see all this wiring up here uh, this wiring leads to pistons. I'm just going to knock this torch off and show you. So there's pistons underneath everywhere you see uh, the redstone going into these blocks. And these pistons control the wiring, or the, sorry, the water streams below. And they're capable of turning them on and off. And see, the, uh, the delay is the same for both sides here. So uh, this water stream and this water stream turn on and off at the same time. Uh, because there's the same number of repeaters uh, between each segment. So, come over here. We'll see, this is where I invert the signal. And then if we continue to come over here, being careful not to fall. Because if we fall, it's probably death. Uh, yeah. So over here we have a piston clock. And I'll show you how this works in just a second. But basically what happens is uh, we send a send a pulse into this outer circuit here and the pistons will rotate this one will fire pushing it over then that one then that one then that one and it keeps going around and around the uh, the output is basically this torch here and you'll see right now it's cut off by this uh, this solid block here but if a transparent block like glass were to come over this uh, part right here then the signal would be able to go through the glass and would be carried along and switch the state of the uh, of the mob spawner. So let's go ahead and get down here. This thing here, this piston, I'll show you what that does in just a second as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop down. Okay, let me eat something here. So here we have uh, a few different mechanisms. Let me check the sun. We're good on time, I think. So I have a few different uh, mechanisms here. So this button here starts the piston clock up there you just saw. Uh, it's just a redstone uh, staircase up. So it just goes back up and around and twirls all the way up. So if I hit this, it'll start the clock. Uh, this thing, this lever here, goes uh, down that way and out toward out to that point there and this turns the water streams themselves on and off so this is sort of a manual override of the clock because typically what happens is uh, the clock will start and it'll be it'll be running and it will pulse about every 25 seconds it'll give a water pulse or, or just a sorry a redstone pulse and the water will uh, will pulse, it'll come out, flush the mobs down into the system, and then turn off, allowing more mobs to spawn. And the reason I went with this design is exactly because of that, uh, the pulsing water. Because if mobs are, uh, I think it's more than 32 blocks away from you, they become idle, and they don't move at all. So that's what traditional mob systems uh, suffer from. But this gets around that by pushing them through uh, off the off the edge uh, via water streams and then into the lava blade so it's much more efficient in that regard uh, this block here if you've already hit the clock start button 
then uh, this this lever here will shut down the clock just by moving a piston into the way of the redstone signal. Uh, it doesn't break the signal; it just stops the the clock. So let's see. Got a yeah. We got. I think we have enough time for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn spawning on, and we should be able be able to see some entities spawn in there just that E number up there right now there's none in there there we go one two and should spawn a whole bunch more and we uh, let's just wait around and see there we go eleven yeah so the mob counts going up so we can go ahead and start our clock and let's just go ahead and go up here and we'll see what this clock actually does. So got to be careful coming up here. It's a little dangerous. Don't want to fall off yet. Okay. Yeah. So here you can hear the or you can hear. Yeah, I guess you can hear it. Uh, you can hear and see the clock running. So let's get up here. So you'll see how this clock works. So right now, this torch is not uh, able to send the signal, but once the glass block is pushed over here, right there, it sends the signal, and then turns off. So that uh, indicates the water stream. Uh, the default is default is off. So then it turns it on. Water pulses, pushes mobs down. And let's see how many mobs we got over there. 16, 15. All right. And then, of course, uh, this is the uh, clock on and off mechanism. Whenever we activate that lever, this block is pushed out by the sticky piston. And it just deactivates it by not allowing the redstone to connect here. So let's go ahead and drop down. And we should be getting some drops. Yeah. Yep, there's some drops down there. Nice. So let's see what we got. We got six arrows, ten bones, seven gunpowder, seven rotten flesh. Just from the minute or two... Uh, that we we spent uh, getting that clock running. All right, so let's see how we're doing on mob count. 65, 68, nice. So we got quite a few entities in there now, and the mob drops should start to uh, flow in uh, pretty rapidly now. Yeah, they're starting to come in pretty rapidly. As as far as the rates go for this, uh, the rate that I got, I tested it. I did a 10 minute test. And this is all the resources I got over the course of 10 minutes. So this is 299 items in 10 minutes. So it's about 1,800 items per hour. So it's pretty decent, uh, pretty decent rates. And yeah, you can just see uh, a lot of items coming down, and they all collect here. And you can just sit AFK here for pretty much as long as you want. Uh, so basically what this mob farm means is we now have uh, infinite, or basically infinite uh, gunpowder, bones, arrows, zombie meat, and also it produces a little bit of string from the from the spiders. Uh, yeah, but that's, that's pretty much how it works. And let's see, spawning is on right now. The clock is still on. You can see that redstone pulsing there. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's see, we got 44 entities, 47. So yeah, I, f I feel like it's pretty pretty decent rates. Uh, as far as time it took me to build, I would estimate it took me uh, maybe a few hours. The hardest part is uh, getting underneath of it to do the water streams. You have to build separate scaffolding for that. But overall, not too bad. I used most of the cobblestone I got from the slime farm when I dug out basically that whole slime chunk uh, last episode but yeah let's go ahead and go ahead and uh, turn the spawning well, first of all we turn the clock off and you'll see that redstone no longer pulses so then we just retract that piston then we turn spawning off by flicking that lever down and we should gradually see the entity count go down so let's see if that occurs so we're at 40 entities right now these mob drops will continue to flow down. I'm just going to go ahead and have a little sleep here. All right, nice. And looks like one zombie spawned up there. 
still trying to torch out the whole area because you do get high spawning rates this high because you're uh, more than 144 blocks away from the from the ground down there at y equals 64 so a few more drops still coming in we're down to 21 entities now 19 18 16 yeah they're getting killed off pretty fast now so that's the mob trap uh, looks like we got a spider up there too I still have to torch out uh, the top of that a little bit it appears because you don't want a creeper spawning and then have him come and blow everything up that actually happened on this this area here once and it was not uh, not a pleasant time so let's see we're down to two entities right now and those are just the it's probably just the spider on top and this drop here yep cool yep all right, so that's uh, that's the mob farm now disabled, so very cool. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this off here, and you'll see we got quite a bunch of uh, of items just in that little four to five minute window. And now we get to blay ourselves off of this. Hey oh, nice. I like it. Nice. So yeah, it's way up there. Uh, looks pretty cool from the uh, from the ground, in my opinion. Uh, yeah, it looks like just like a, I don't know, I don't know what it looks like. I think it looks pretty neat though. And then I also made this lily pad path out here with some gaps for boats. If we ever want to come out here by boat or just walk out here. And this lily pad, uh, lily pad bridge, I guess, is what I call it. It it goes all the way back to our base, as you'll see. So yeah, let's go ahead and make our way back there, and I think I think that's all I got for today. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, go ahead and head down to the mine and see what today's highlighted channel is. Uh, next episode, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I don't have too much cobble left over. You'll see this is all the cobble I have. Uh, this double chest was basically full last time, and it's totally empty. So it takes at least a double chest full of cobble to uh, construct something like that. But uh, next episode, I think what we're going to do is I'll do some aesthetic changes, some small uh, changes to the world. We're going to get our cake room decorated somewhat, and also uh, that big wood with the wood floor uh, that big room with the wood floor downstairs decorated. And I think I'm ready to go down. Yeah, we're ready to go down. Yep, we'll check by the slime farm real quick too. See how that's doing. Nice. Looks like we got a few slimes in there right now. And this thing has been working really well for me. Uh, I've been getting a lot of slimes out of it. So, also I'm gonna go ahead and <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and dig it and dig this out with the uh, Fortune Three pick. As I was uh, trolling heavily last time. And there we go. That should be good. Put this back. Like that. Nice. Okay. I'm going to leave that diamond block there for now. I'll come back and get it probably off screen. But right now we're going to head down to the mine and see if today's highlighted channel is. So before we get to the highlighted channel, I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Dude IFY. He actually mentioned that I had missed two repeaters somewhere on my blaze spawner and I went back and saw that I did indeed miss those and I fixed it as soon as possible so thank you Dr. Dude IFY for downloading the world and notifying me that uh, two repeaters were missing there. I appreciate that very much and if anybody else uh, downloads the world and uh, sees something that I missed or anything please let me know. So today's highlight channel is the 1942 dude. So a little bit about his channel. Uh, it's a relatively small channel right now, but he uh, he watches a lot of Minecraft videos, has some Minecraft playlists, and also a video uh, with Flo Rida. So you can go ahead and check out his channel if you want to. Link in the description, and we'll see how he does against the other competitors. Okay, so we just got done digging out the 1942 dude's mine shaft. Let's go ahead and see how he did. Jump back here. 
and he ended up with a total of nine diamonds so that puts him in sixth place so I'll change the signs and I'll be back okay everyone here's the updated standings the 1942 dude coming in sixth place with nine diamonds today as always if you'd like a shot at getting your name in the mine shaft and possibly onto the leaderboard just leave a comment or send me a personal message on YouTube and I'll add you to the pool but do be patient because there are quite a few names still in the pool uh, wanting to get into the mine shaft two more things I want to talk about today guys the first one is a big thank you to all you viewers who came onto the minecraft tunnel server and played a little bit with me I had estimate I get on there about every other day so if you want to play some minecraft with me uh, just click on the links in the description I'll have links to where you can apply to minecraft tunnel it is a whitelisted server and you can also check out the video the video will be in the upper right hand corner uh, an invitation in the upper right hand corner somewhere also uh, I want to talk a little bit about 1.3 my guess is uh, with the latest snapshot Jeb said uh, that the 1.3 release is coming soon so I'm guessing 1.3 will be out either this week or next week and I'm really excited about all the new stuff the ender chests, desert temples the uh, jungle temples the night sky is gonna be awesome because the stars are fixed now a uh, whole bunch of uh, really really great features I'm really looking forward to uh, trip wires things of that nature but I think for a while it might be a little bit uh, tough going uh, I'm also concerned about my elevators this one and the other one breaking hopefully that won't be the case though uh, there'll probably be an adjustment period of about a month or two where things will be uh, a little chaotic but after that the update should be pretty awesome uh, but other than that, guys, that's all I have for today. So thank you all for watching. This has been Cub Van. Goodbye.